The mistress of the lecherous Count John is devoted to him body and soul, an uncut woman flirting with her younger brother. These same ridiculous rumors were about Caterina Orléans, which were spread about her by her envious people. Ten years have passed since the very moment when Laura's stepmother married the noble Viscount Orléans. There was a noticeable difference in the relationship between the sisters. There was open preference for one and absolute indifference for the other. Laura and her stepsister Anna humiliated Caterina. The stepmother often allowed herself to shout at the girl even for looking up. And the punishment for the girl was to sit in her room and not leave there. Even Viscount Orleans, who at first tried to reconcile between them, in the end began to see Catherine only as a burden. Catherine didn't really need a lot. She didn't aspire to have the same number of outfits and shoes as Anna. She wasn't even bothered by those awful old tattered curtains in her small bedroom, and even the boots, the soles of which were so badly worn that even the heels became of different heights. Two years have passed since she put up with such a reality and memory of her late mother, but even her patience has come to an end. From now on, she no longer felt the need to live like this. Katerina was too tired of such a life. Katerina's stepmother, Laura Orlin. She looked like a proud, evil woman, she called Katerina. Pointing her finger directly in the girl's face, she said that their family did not need a daughter like her. At that time, the girl silently looked at her. The girl's thoughts were that she was always to blame for everything. The girl was really tired of this attitude towards her. Therefore, closing her eyes, the girl with a proud look walked past her stepmother, who poked her with a finger and scolded her again for the fact that the girl exists. The girl sat down on a chair with her hands folded, looking at her stepmother, who almost exploded with anger. Turning to her, she began to rebuke her for being the eldest daughter, and how dare she sit in front of a standing guest and asked her if she had taught her such manners. This upset Katerina a little, because she did not teach her. The girl even thought that in such a case, she would be better off calling the teacher a rhinoceros bug. In front of the girl stood her fiancé, Charles Keelholder. The girl did not understand what she called an important guest of this pitiful man. While the girl asked her stepmother what exactly she wants from her, the girl sincerely did not understand what was expected of her. The stepmother answered her that she didn't tell her that such a child would be of no use to the Orleans family. The stepmother also added that she thought the girl had hearing problems. The girl contemptuously asked the stepmother that she thought she wanted the girl to leave the estate. Katerina's half-sister bursts in the door and addresses the girl so excitedly. Anne of Orleans is Catherine's half-sister and Charles's lover. She asked her sister not to speak like that. The girl shed a tear and said that these rumors cannot be true and added that she believes in her sister. While Katerina's fiancé Charles soothes the emotional Anna, it was noticeable that he is quite worried about the girl. Charles turned to her and said that her tears were too precious for her to waste them on such a thing, and the girl answered him that she could not hold back her tears when she thought about the difficulties her sister would have to go through. As soon as Charles put his brave shoulder for her, her tears stopped. When she was in his arms, she looked at her sister and said how sorry she was for her sister. Katerina looked at them and thought that they had no shame or conscience, and the girl knew that Anna was the one who made the most efforts to spread rumors. Moreover, Anna did not even hide the fact that she was having an affair with Charles behind her sister's back. The mother heard her daughter's words. She was proud of her child and her good heart. At that time, Katerina answered her that she would leave. It definitely attracted more attention than Anna's verge of tears. The stepmother was surprised by the girl's answer because she did not expect that the girl would agree so quickly. Katerina herself did not understand what exactly Matuka considered so unexpected and decided to ask her what exactly this should mean. The stepmother was excited and decided to ask the girl whether she thinks that her scandalous stories will be forgotten if she leaves and wondered why the girl would hide her happy face. The girl folded her hands and began to think about what exactly she needed to do to fix it and decided to ask, maybe she should kill herself right here. She turned to Charles and asked his opinion on this matter and also asked if Orleans would be able to avoid the consequences if she decided to hang herself in this house. Of course, Anna and Charles were embarrassed by such a question but the boy could not find anything to answer the girl. Anna's face showed that she was already bored and wanted to end it as soon as possible, but she could not spoil her role as an ideal sister. Therefore, she ran to Katerina, grabbed her hand, and asked her not to say that she was leaving. She began to blame herself for this and asked the girl to put this burden on her. Katerina is tired of her noisy stepmother, brainless fiancé and two-faced stepsister. Katerina was disgusted with them until the very end and asked her sister to let her go. Anna looked at her and did not understand what was the matter, why she behaved so boldly towards her and her stepmother. 
Katerina added that the silence she hears can only mean that no one has anything against it and added that she will go upstairs to collect things. The girl went to herself and Anna shouted after her, which led the girl to think that the fact that her sister does not leave the role until the end deserves applause. Holding her small suitcase in her hands, the girl thought that even though she packed all her things, one small suitcase still came out. Walking to the exit, Katerina hears her stepmother addressing her and asking her what she is doing. The stepmother again begins to scold Katerina, telling her that her shamelessness knows no bounds. She also asked how the girl dares to appropriate the family's property. The girl sarcastically answered her that her stepmother could not allow her to leave peacefully. Also, the girl answered her that she understood everything and asked her to finally close her mouth. For the first time in her life, she said everything she thinks about her stepmother to her face. If she knew how nice it would be, she would have done it earlier. Walking away, the girl heard her sister shouting that she allegedly could not believe that Katerina was leaving and asked Charles to do something. Katerina approaches Charles and slaps him for cheating on her with her sister. Until the stepsister can understand what is happening, she looks at the proud Katerina and at Charles, who is lying on the floor. Katerina decides to hit Anna on the leg as well. She did not understand what was happening and why she was acting like that. After Katerina expressed her emotions, she thought that now she feels much better. The girl turned to this couple saying that she forgot to say something. She only turned her head and added that they should hand over to her stepmother so that she would not look for her if they wanted to live in peace and tranquility and thought that she would also live like that. And she offered the couple in love to say goodbye forever, as if they never knew each other. So the girl left the hated estate and her new life began here. That's how she finally chose her long and not always easy path. Finally, the girl felt what life is like. She felt the sun, and it seemed that it was like a blessing from God, that it was bright and perfect. The girl wondered if there had been at least one day in recent years as cheerful as today. Finally, the girl's dream came true, and she will start living the way she wants. She believed that there is nothing more ideal than the freedom she never had before. Leaving Orleans was the main goal of the girl, but now she should decide where it would be better to go. The girl looked at the map and understood that the land owned by the Viscount occupies only a tiny piece of the entire earth. The girl could not believe that all this time she lived on such a small piece of land. It was difficult for her even to breathe fully. The girl feels a sense of guilt, decides to apologize to her late mother, adding that she has meekly endured for many years, but it's time to start her own life. The kind gentleman who agreed to take Katerina away asked her if she had decided where she wanted to go, and the girl answered him that at that very moment she understood where she wanted to go. The girl decided to go to the Duchy of Christopher, the most flourishing land in the east of the empire. The girl decided that it was there that she would start her life with a clean slate. Katerina finally stayed in this big, beautiful city. She felt that this is where she should be now, and that this is where she belongs. Arriving, a man carrying a box in his hands told her to follow him, that this is the place. The girl stood and looked at a short, plump man with papers in his hands. Fire appeared in the girl's eyes. She could not believe what she was seeing. The man said to her that this is the house. He added that this was exactly the property she was looking for. The house really looked very big. It seemed that one could not dream of more. The reason Catherine chose the Duchy of Christopher as her new home is that these lands have achieved excellence in all areas, such as finance, culture, and art. It was a land that had been under the patronage of the Archmage for a long time. But Katerina, it took a lot of money and time to leave Orleans. Besides, she was wasted due to a sudden change of destination and gave up the surname Orleans and took her mother's maiden name of Panya. Although the girl was shocked that her old bank account was closed, the coachman treated her with compassion and helped her in this difficult situation. That is why she managed to avoid the crisis. Approximately 15 days after she settled in the hotel, Good news awaited Katerina as long as she survived by selling her things, it happened. On this day, luck went hand in hand with her because she managed to find a good property on the outskirts of the city. The real estate turned out to be exactly the old estate that Katerina was looking at when she arrived here. The girl looked at the old shabby house together with the realtor, who was very worried. Katerina spoke to the realtor, saying that the house is really too big for such a price, and he replied that it is exactly so. The realtor added that this estate was the largest residential building in the northern part of Christopher, and added that as the girl could see, there were also two large outbuildings next to the main building. He gave the girl the papers, and added that she would not find real estate for such a price anywhere in Christopher. The girl looked at him silently. Holding the papers in her hands, Katerina turned and excitedly looked away. 
she looked at this beautiful city on its big wide streets, and it seemed to her that she couldn't find a better place for her. Standing on the edge of the cliff, the girl said that a very beautiful view of the city opens up from here. The realtor added that it is also close to the port by boat. It was a really beautiful place to enjoy the ocean views. The girl turned to the realtor and asked him why this real estate is so cheap. She was worried about this question. The realtor answered her with a trembling voice that it was because she was really lucky. And he added that she will not find such an estate anywhere else, and finally added that it is truly a heavenly blessing. Everything seemed strange to Katerina, no matter how much she thought about it, because it could not be that such an estate was sold for such a price. The realtor turned to the girl and asked her what she still thinks, and added that the building is only dirty inside because it has not been used for a long time, but the house is still in good condition. Turning around, the girl asked what the trick was. She knew for sure that something was wrong here. The realtor kindly told her that there was no trick here. The girl was just very lucky. The girl answered him that she had nothing against this luxurious large estate with a wonderful garden and an incredible location, and concluded that she would like to buy it. Opening her umbrella, she added that it seems to her that there are some complicating circumstances that he cannot tell her about. The girl looked so relaxed and asked to cancel the contract, because she was not in a position to make a mistake. She had only one attempt. The girl also added that she does not trust him and that his work as a mediator is over. The realtor tried to say something to her, but his voice was shaky and unclear. The girl ran away like that, leaving the realtor standing alone, but he still tried to stop her. In her mind, the girl remembers that in the end, she repeatedly faced the fact that some aspect did not fit her criteria, and I think that it would be better to look for another house somewhere nearby. The realtor runs after the girl and tries to stop her. He yelled at her to stop, wait a minute. The look of the realtor really caused pity. It seemed that he was about to start crying. He admitted to the girl that he was wrong. The girl looked very confused. She did not understand what exactly he did wrong and what he was hiding. The chubby realtor, trying to catch his breath, added to her that he would tell her everything honestly. Raising his index finger, the realtor finally began to tell. He said that to be honest, there is something in this estate, and he added that there is a ghost living in the house. Even in the basement, on a full moon, you can hear screams, and you can also hear a girl crying. The man himself did not know whether these rumors were true or not, but four contracts were terminated in the last two years. But the girl interrupted him and said that it sounded great and that she would sign the contract. The realtor was shocked that even after learning the truth, the girl was satisfied with everything. Katerina signed contracts and added that she has no friends, so she is lonely, having said that it is even for the better. The girl signed the contract and gave it to her husband, saying that at least she would not be bored. Everything suited her. Having settled in her new house, the girl took up cleaning. How exactly did she clean the floor and was shocked that the surroundings were so dirty? The girl thinks that she is really very glad that she found a new home, but it will require a lot of cleaning and she wonders why there are so many rooms. Holding a broom in her hands, she looked out the window. The girl was shocked by what she saw there. She immediately opened the yoga and it seemed as if a breath of fresh air gave her strength. The girl saw what a beautiful view opens from this room. She did not regret buying this house. You could tell by the girl's face that she was completely satisfied with her new life. She really liked it. She was happy. She caught herself thinking that it was nothing terrible. She needed to be patient. And unlike Ornitute, it is a heavenly place. The girl had a good idea that candles should be lit in each of the rooms because it would take a long time to conduct the electricity. The girl was interested in where the candles from the store, which she had bought in Orléans, had gone again. Going down the stairs, the girl remembers the words of the realtor who said that the house is haunted. But the girl actively began to drive away bad thoughts and thought that it was all nonsense. Despite the realtor's warning, the girl dares to go down to the basement. Going down, the girl notices that there is a light burning behind the basement door. It seemed strange to her because it is not there. A brave girl decides to open the door and look inside the room. The girl was shocked when she saw what was happening there. She could not believe her eyes. She saw something like a seal in front of her. It really surprised her. In the middle of this dark and scary basement, the girl hears a voice that says that whoever takes possession of it will become the ruler of the whole world. The girl started to run away from there, but she couldn't think of how this was possible. But in fact, the girl was extremely angry because there was such a mess around. The girl tried to wipe off the seal and wondered what kind of scoundrel left so much dirt on the floor. It made her very nervous. She was interested in one thing, whether before writing something on the floor it was impossible to wash it, 
The girl did not know what would happen sooner, whether she would wash the floor or she would fall asleep. While the girl was cleaning, she heard that she was asked who she was. The girl was very surprised and turned around. She was wondering who had come to her. She looked at the mysterious guy who was wearing a hood and looked very mysterious. The guy put his sword to her neck and added that he asked who she was anyway. He continued to ask the girl if she was her father's watchdog and was very surprised that she had even crept in here while she had one question, who was this person? The boy did not have wide purple eyes, light, even porcelain skin, and he generally had an appearance that was not of this world. Standing next to him, Katerina thought, maybe he is the former owner of this house. The boy told the girl that she disguised herself well, while the girl herself did not believe her previous opinion. The boy began to attack the girl and told her that anyone would mistake her for an ordinary housewife and added that he was almost deceived. While he continued that every day more progress can be seen, the girl thought that she could no longer listen to him. The girl shouted to him to wipe, but the boy did not understand what was being said. The girl turned to the boy, telling him that she had no idea what was going on here, and ordered him to start wiping the dirt from that place. It turns out that when the boy entered the room, he left dirty tracks. Katerina reproached him that she spent a lot of time cleaning the floor, and he ruined everything. The girl also added that it was impolite to brandish one's sword, and it was not enough that he unceremoniously broke into her house. She asked him if he might want her to report the attempt on her life. The boy approached Katerina and told her that it was not funny. The guy leaned over to the girl and asked her if it was too obvious that she was pretending not to know anything. The guy left, waved his hand, and added that he was in a good mood today. Katerina looked at him and did not understand what was happening. The guy added that if she tells the truth, he will save her life. The girl remembered how, as a child, her mother, stroking her head, told her not to approach magicians on the street. The woman added that if she wants to live a long and happy life, she should do as her mother tells her and asked her never to forget her words. The girl finally understood that in front of her was an unusual guy, but a real magician. But while the girl was lost in her thoughts, the boy did not stop and continued to tell her to tell him what her goal was. The girl did not expect to meet a wizard in such a place. That seems to be the last thing she could think about. The girl understood that she should not betray herself. She should not show him that she is really very scared. Katerina waved her hand and answered him that she did not know what kind of misunderstanding happened here, but her goal was to clean up all this mess, and unlike the boy, she was not in such a good mood. And she added to him that he needed to stop behaving as if he were in his own house, and insisted that either he would help her, or he had better leave. While the young magician froze in place and could not understand what this girl was saying, she asked him to wait a second while he was still standing and wondering what exactly she was going to do. Suddenly, the girl pulled out a small piece of paper from her chest. Katerina handed him a piece of paper and emphasized that these papers are proof that she, Katerina Panya, is the owner of this estate. The girl continued that according to these papers, all the land, the house, the basement, and even the sky are her property, and added that at first he illegally broke into someone else's house pretending to be the owner, and then even threatened her. Katerina began to tear the papers out of this guy's hands telling him that if it hadn't reached him yet, she could read the document to him herself. The guy asked the girl if Katerina Panya bought this land and this estate. She answered him that this is exactly how she bought this land. You could see from the boy how puzzled he was by this information. He turned to the girl, saying that she was the new owner of this place, and at first decided to apologize for his inappropriate behavior, and was about to add something when Katerina realized that she had already seen him somewhere. Her face was familiar to her. The girl added that it must be difficult to forget such a face, even after seeing it once, but she could not remember where she saw it. The boy looked away from the girl, saying that it would be better for her to cover her cleavage. The girl covered her mouth with her hand, began to laugh, and added to him that she thought it would be faster if he left here, and then she would start tying a knot on her clothes. Also, Katerina noticed that he is quite polite for the first average person. The boy turned his head and answered the girl that in that case he would leave. The girl grabbed his cloak and asked him to stop. The girl added, asking him if he could leave this light, explaining it by the fact that she has no candles. The boy silently looked at the girl, not knowing what to answer, and the girl eagerly waited for his answer, hoping that he would agree. From that day, a peaceful life began, because more than anything, the girl disturbed the magic circle in the basement, but at some point it went out, as if it had fulfilled its purpose. Thanks to this, the girl was able to concentrate on organizing the estate, and since it is really very big, it took the girl quite a few days to clean it completely. 
Therefore, now the girl is enjoying a rare moment of rest, which she could not afford before. After making a cup of black tea, the girl realized that there was really peace and tranquility around her, something she really lacked. Stretching her hands, the girl added that there is nothing better than time alone with herself. She was really glad that she left that home. The girl heard a voice that told her that she definitely looked satisfied, but the girl did not wait for the guests. The same guy from the basement was sitting in front of the girl, but this time he looked completely different. He decided to enjoy a cup of tea with her, but the girl was not satisfied with such company. The boy began to ask Katerina if she heard any strange sounds at night. The girl replied that she did not hear anything. He asked again if there had been any unusual visions, or if she had felt the estate shake. The girl replied that there was nothing like that. Then the boy asked her if it was possible that she had nightmares at night. The girl answered that she had no nightmares. Katerina sat and did not understand how this could happen. She was definitely not happy about the uninvited guest. The girl wondered why this man appeared, just when the water for tea was boiling. And instead of asking where it would be better to sit, he simply sat down wherever he wanted without even asking permission. The girl was outraged by such an appearance, and even more so by the fact that now he is sitting and asking her strange questions. While sitting at the table, the boy told her that if he was bothering her so much, why shouldn't she start looking for another estate? But the girl answered him that she had no desire. Propping his chin with his hand, the boy told her that apparently the girl does not like social conversations. And the girl rightly noticed that now they are having exactly such a conversation. Katerina caught herself thinking that she was too tactless and that she was not going to answer like that at all, but she did not know how she should do it if it was true. The girl told the boy that now that the boy told about it, the girl remembered. The mediator talked about something similar. She remembered that he told her that a ghost supposedly lived in the basement of the estate. The guy was a little shocked by the fact that the girl was warned about it, but she still bought the estate. When he asked her about it, he heard the answer as if it was not a problem for her. The girl did not understand why she was answering his question, let alone making excuses. Maybe it's because his face drove her crazy. Katerina had almost forgotten how he used to look like a vagabond from the street, but now he exuded the nobility of a representative of a high caste. Divchenai knew that it was this situation that had such an effect on her, but it seemed to her that the color of her eyes had changed compared to that day. Looking into the mug with her tea, the girl realized that she was embarrassed to look into his eyes. The thought dawned on Katerina that maybe last time it was quite dark and she could have made a mistake. But the girl continued that if he got all the answers to the questions he was interested in, why wouldn't he leave until the girl really paid for his trespassing on someone else's property? The guy looked like he wasn't going anywhere, and he thought about what the girl told him. She, in turn, was no longer alarmed by this. She turned to him and asked how difficult this question was, that it required him to think for such a long time. The boy answered her that it was enough for today. But the girl could not let it slip from his hands. She asked him who said that he decides, and added that this time she will let him go because of her goodwill. But next time he won't happen so easily. The guy got up from the table and for some reason reached into the inner pocket of his jacket. The guy took money out of his pocket and put it on the table. He told the girl that this was payment for the tea she had kindly treated him to. The girl stood dumbfounded and could not understand what kind of fee it was. When she finally understood what had just happened, the boy was no longer around, but she still continued to shout at him for this disrespect. The girl stood and did not understand why all the city men behaved like that. Does he think that if he has a good appearance, he has the right to behave like that? The girl thinks that's fine, and he wants to see how much a city boy spends on tea. The girl is very surprised and looks at the bills that the boy gave her. She can't decide if he was joking or not. The excited girl says that he left her 100 lei, and 100 light off is it. This is money with which you can hire six maids for a whole month. The girl was extremely surprised by such generosity of the guy. Holding the money in her hands and remembering him, the girl could not understand who he really is. Five days have passed since the guy went to the girl's place for tea and left her 100 lei. The girl decided to go for groceries, holding her list in her hands and checking whether she had bought everything. Mentally, she seemed to agree with the fact that she had not forgotten anything. Something caught the girl's attention. She looked at it with such interest. It turns out that her attention was drawn to the bulletin board, near which there was a group of people. Out of curiosity, the girl approached the bulletin board, mentally imagining what might have happened. Perhaps the emperor had rested or something like that. But she saw on the board that Archduke Caesar had fulfilled the emperor's order after two years of traveling. The girl thought that nothing special happened there. 
and in a moment, the girl, looking at the poster, realized that this man seemed familiar to her. He turned out to be Mr. 100 Leadoff, the very one who came to her for tea. The girl began her thoughts out loud by saying that her cheekbones are a little different, and that this man on the poster is of course handsome even for an archduke, but that tramp looks much more handsome. Adding that his gaze was cold, a gloomy aura emanated from him until he spoke. The girl turned around hearing that someone was addressing her with the words that if someone heard her, they would think that she actually knows this person. A man who called himself the head of the police, named Mel Fairbuck, introduced himself before her, adding that he was responsible for the protection of the northern lands. The girl answered him that she was Katerina Panya, and that she was also pleased to meet him. Katerina told him that she does not quite understand what is happening in the center. Therefore, I dared to ask him what was the order of the emperor that the archduke had to fulfill. The man was surprised that she did not know, but answered her that the order was that there was a fair trial of the evil dragon Guarsharap. The girl was extremely surprised. She asked him if he meant the same Guarsharap, the ruler of the southern ridges of the empire, which can match the abilities of the emperor himself because he has very rare abilities. However, even his majesty could not resist the evil dragon, and it is thanks to him that the inhabitants of the city can calmly move around Christopher with the onset of darkness. This creature is responsible for burning the largest kingdom in the southern part of the empire, as well as threatening to swallow the entire royal family. The merciless dragon Guarsharap and the Archduke Wizard are able to stop such a dragon on their own. The girl couldn't believe that this was the same vagrant whom she tried to force to wash the floor in her basement. The girl thought that if she had known about it earlier, she would have been able to control her anger and behave more gently with him. While the officer added to her that he had heard that she was the new owner of the estate on the mountain, and added that if she needed any help, she could always turn to him. While feeding the cat, the girl thought that she had to take care of the garden again, and whether she would be kicked out of Christopher's house before she settled everything here. Bowing her head, the girl thought that if it was still quiet, then maybe he forgot what happened that day. If he is an ex-duke, then he must have more important things to do than this. She started talking to the cat, saying that she envied him because he could live and not worry about taxes or paying for housing. This sweet conversation was interrupted by something. It was a very loud crash. Turning around, the girl saw that part of her house was destroyed and began to wonder if she was suddenly asleep. She sees part of some monster addressing someone saying that how human race dared to defy him. In front of this monster stood none other than the Archduke with a fearless look. He listened to the monster. While the girl was looking at this sight in surprise, the Archduke took out his majestic sword and swung it. The monster turned to the boy and said that he should not even think of running away because he was going to feast on him. Raising his paw, he added that he would slowly chew through every sinew in his body, but he did not even have time to finish as the boy rushed towards him with incredible speed. Everything happened so lightning fast that even the monster himself did not have time to understand anything. How an ugly, terrible head was already flying to the ground. He was Archduke Caesar. He was a fearless and brave warrior who fought against evil. The girl called him. She was quite angry about what happened here. Grabbing him by the shoulder, she turned him towards her, asking him why he was in her house again and what kind of terrible monster it was. The boy looked at her in surprise and questioned the monster as if he did not understand what was being said. The girl drew his attention to the goat's head, which was lying on the floor, and the boy answered her that it was nonsense. Why shouldn't she calm down first? Katerina looked at him angrily and asked if he had decided to joke with her now. The house was put in order so hard, but now it is destroyed. The girl asked him if she could calm down in such a case. The next moment the house looked the same as before, the girl was very surprised by such an end to these events. The boy turned to her, reminding her that he had said that it was nonsense, adding that how could a girl see the house that she so diligently cleaned remained without a single destruction. The girl is surprised that a person who is able to use such strong magic is in Christopher's fiefdom. Catherine dared to ask him if he was Archduke Caesar. The girl was very worried about his answer. She was interested in what he would answer. And he will say that he is the owner of these lands, and I thought that he would hardly deny it. But the boy answered her that it was not him, and that he was often told that they were very similar to each other. The girl mentally called the guy a liar because she knew the truth. Looking at this guy, the girl notices that he has exactly the same face as on the advertisement that hung in the middle of the square. Katerina does not understand whether he hopes that she will believe at least one of his words. 
but it was possible to say for sure that there is nothing good in contacting such a person. So the girl asked him to wait a moment. Taking out the book in which the money was hidden, the girl decided to get it from there, and to give it to him during this, she turned to him, saying that she was returning his money to him, and asked him not to appear in her house again. The guy was surprised that even after what she saw here, she was going to stay in this estate. He answered her that he thought it would be better to spend this money on buying a new property. The girl is again determined that she is not going to leave this estate. She asked him if she hadn't said the same thing a few days ago and was already going to threaten him with the police again. As the guy grabbed her hand in which she was holding the money, the guy asked her if she was scared, telling her that if she dies here, she won't be able to open her mouth to report to the police. The girl remembers what her mother told her. She said that people with magical abilities can be recognized by the color of their eyes and that purple ones are considered the most dangerous among them. The mother added that she was not sure about other colors, but she knew for sure that you need to be very careful with those who have purple eyes. The girl was very excited and realized that she was not mistaken when she saw purple eyes. The sparkle in his eyes last time is his true essence. The guy added that he cannot guarantee that everything will be as smooth as it happened today. The guy added that these fear-inspiring creatures without a human form, they want to get this estate, and to be more precise, they need the land on which it is built. The boy decided to repeat himself, saying that what happened today could happen again at any moment. Adding money to those in the young girl's hands, he decided to give her a little advice, having said that next time she may lose not only her property, but also her life. In the end, they clapped. He added to her, so that the girl would think carefully about his proposal. After these last words, he disappeared into the fog, leaving a thousand lay to the girl. Judging by everything, with this gesture, he hints in every way that she should stop bothering him and go away. Katerina thought that now that she knows who he really is, if she continues, she may find herself in a very bad position. She almost resigned herself to the fact that she would have to leave this estate, thinking that she should have a better place next time. While putting away the books, the girl suddenly notices a small piece of paper hidden in her palm. The girl was surprised by such a find, because she did not expect to find something similar. Unfolding it, she saw that this photo was of a woman she knew very well. Looking at her, she could not believe what she was seeing. She was shocked. After all, it turned out that it was none other than her mother, whom, by the way, she loved very much. She was everything for Katerina. The time spent together was the best moment in her life. She felt as if the whole world belonged to her, and she had nothing to fear next to her. When ten years have passed since the moment Katerina's mother disappeared, the little girl was very interested in why her mother left her. She asked this question a hundred or even a thousand times during the past ten years. In relation to her mother, the girl harbored a grudge, but continued to miss her. The girl was surprised that this portrait is still in such good condition, as if it had been painted very recently. Katerina understood that everything was exactly as she thought. Her mother did not die, but why her portrait was lying in this estate and how her mother is connected with this place. These were her main questions. Even now, when the girl settled in Christopher, when so many difficulties fell on her, in the depths of her soul, she was still painfully experiencing the disappearance of her mother. The girl did not know whether it was a simple coincidence that she found something related to her mother in this very estate. Maybe here you can find even more threads that can lead Katerina to her mother. But Katerina did not forget the boy's words, that if what happened recently happened again, the girl could be in mortal danger. The girl did not know which way would be right and safe for her, but she knew one thing, she cannot lose the last thread to her mother. The girl decided that if everything turned out like this, she could not retreat. She is not going anywhere from here until she finds something that can help her find her mother. Four days have passed since that moment, a lot has happened. In order to try to find more clues about the mother, Katerina and Rosa searched the entire estate. Rosa is the first maid that Katerina hired with the money she had left. Rose found many hidden things. As you might expect from an old estate, there were many secret places and unknown corners where there could be any clues. The previous owner of the estate had an unusual hobby. The girl thought that if she had not seen the monster with her own eyes that day, she would have thought so. Katerina was sitting wrapped in a blanket and reading a book when she suddenly heard a noise outside the door. It was her maid Rosa, she asked Katerina if she was sleeping, and the girl thought what could have brought the girl here at such a late hour. The maid looked very frightened, so Katerina asked her, and something happened. The girl turned to her mistress with a trembling voice, saying that she knew that her behavior seemed inappropriate, but asked if she could stay with her for a while. Katerina hugged her assistant and thought that the girl was shaking terribly. 
Maybe she had a nightmare. Of course, Katerina led her into the room and offered her something to drink. The frightened maid grabbed Katerina by the hand and asked her not to go anywhere, saying that it was dangerous there and adding that it seemed that there was someone else in the estate besides them. Katerina told her that it couldn't be, but the girl asked the landlady if she heard strange sounds coming from the corridor every night. The maid continued that it was a woman's laughter, the sounds of a running child, and even the sound of stringed instruments, and added that they tormented her every night, that she could not sleep because of them. Katerina remembered that this was exactly what Caesar's strange questions about strange frightening sounds at night, strange visions, or even nightmares were about. But earlier, the girl thought that it was some delusion, and that he was not in his right mind. Katerina turned to the maid, saying that she needed to check something, added that she was quick, and that the girl should not worry, and ordered her to rest in her room. Rosa, of course, was afraid for her mistress, but she could not do anything. Katerina turned to the girl and addressed her, saying that the house belonged to her, and that no one has the right to enter here without her permission. Rosa shouted after her mistress, who was walking further and further from her towards the unknown evil. Walking along one of the halls, the girl thinks that she needs to hurry if the sounds only appear at night, because as soon as the sun rises, she won't be able to find out anything. And she continued that she didn't come to visit and didn't want to stay here for a few days. You can't just sit back and close your eyes to what's happening. The girl decided that until she finds any clue where to look for her mother, she will hold on to this estate. The girl realized that it was too quiet around her. She could hear nothing but the rain and decided that it would be better to check in the basement. But turning her head and looking out the window, the girl realizes that she sees none other than the Archduke Caesar. The girl was surprised that he appeared here in his own person, because he was the last person she expected to see here today. She was worried about what he could be doing outside in such heavy rain. Approaching him, the girl took his shoulder to attract his attention and asked him why he was standing in front of someone else's house. But the boy, in turn, simply fell off his feet directly at Katerina. The girl did not understand what was happening to him. The girl tried to talk to him and ask what was wrong with him, but of course she did not wait for an answer from him. Touching him, she realized that he was cold, even icy. She thought it was strange, even in spite of the fact that he was standing and getting wet in the rain. The girl decided that if she left him here alone, she would have even more problems. The girl was warming herself by the fireplace and thought that she got a little wet, but she was thankful that she managed to warm up very quickly. Looking at the young man, she remembered that she very clearly remembered how she had to drag him to the estate. She recalled that she felt as if she had awakened a power she had never known. Covering him with a blanket, the girl thought that he would get better soon. Of course, the girl understood that in fact he was not a person, but she still did not understand why he was standing in the rain and what he was doing there. He was as if on the verge of life and death. Suddenly, an ominous aura appeared in the room, which seemed to envelop them and penetrated into every corner of the room. Katerina heard that it was souring that she would give it to them. The girl was worried, but she did not understand what exactly this aura was asking of her. The voice continued to speak to her, telling her to hand over that precious one in exchange for the fulfillment of any wish, the thing that destroys in human darkness. Therefore, even this estate in Christopher's was not an exception. It is darker than shadows, more disgusting than dirt with the stench of stale water. Since childhood, it has manifested itself every time she almost forgot about it. The girl again heard the voice beckoning her to exchange that precious thing for a wish. But the girl was very stubborn, and replied that he was too noisy and ordered him to shut up and go away. And she added that if it approaches, she will make sure that it never appears anywhere again. The voice began to say that it is strange that it is really very strange that it does not work, and began to wonder what kind of child this is. The girl looked at how this essence disappeared, wondering why nothing happened to him. The girl sighed with relief, but in her mind she did not even imagine what it was. The only thing the girl knew for sure was that this entity and the guy lying unconscious on the couch with her had the same nature. The girl noted that although they are similar in essence, it is the lowest creature. The girl thought that it repeated the same thing over and over again and that she could not have a dialogue with it. And she continued that if you don't chase away this ominous entity, it will suck like a leech. The girl remembered that this entity bothered her mother as well, but she did everything in her power. And she was already thinking about the plans for tomorrow, about the fact that she would have to take care of the garden together with Rosa, she hoped that it would not rain tomorrow. The last thing the girl saw before she closed her eyes was the boy. She was very interested in what happened to him. 
and she was also interested in why he was standing in the rain. So she fell asleep on the nearby sofa next to a strange boy. Katerina was fast asleep at the moment when a strong and tall guy carried her in his arms. The guy carefully put the girl in her bed and covered her with a blanket. He watched as the girl slept soundly and allowed himself to touch her fiery orange hair. He looked at her not just like any other girl. He admired her. Katerina's mother found out about her husband's betrayal with one of the maids with whom her husband had an affair. She asked and begged to have mercy on her, but the mother was adamant. The mother ordered her little daughter to watch it, and she continued that Katerina should learn an important lesson from this. She must, without a single drop of doubt, step over those who have lost all fear and decide to go to the top, which is not theirs, they will know their place. Katerina remembers her mother's indifferent face, as if it was not she who faced the betrayal, but someone else. There was not a hint of doubt in her voice, as if she was speaking about true life truths. At that time, the mother said that, for example, whoever lay down in the same bed with her husband without any fear would pay for it today. The girl remembers that her mother would like the girl to look like her when she grows up, but Katerina was so small that her thoughts were very naive. The mother added that all this is because she has the right to it. Katerina woke up in fright and grabbed the blanket she was wrapped in. Her face was full of fear. Walking through the corridors of the estate, the girl wonders why she had such a dream. If she had to have a dream about her mother, then it would be better if it was filled with good memories. And the next question she had was why she was in her bed. At the end of the corridor, the girl saw the same boy. He moved on his own, and it felt as if nothing had happened before. Looking at him, the girl was glad that he had gotten better, but wondered why he was still here. The girl, in her usual manner, began to shout at the boy so that he would listen to her. But the boy interrupted the emotional wave of the girl by pointing his finger to her to behave quietly and adding that she should look out the window. At the same moment, the girl turned her head and looked out the window. She wondered what had attracted his attention. There were two people standing on the street. The girl immediately asked him who they were, because it seemed that he knew them. The girl paid attention to their armor. There was no doubt that they were imperial knights. The boy told the girl that these loyal dogs of the emperor are up to something here after those events. And he added that as he had already said before, if she stays in this estate, she will face even greater danger and added that people are no better. He began to tell that the Imperial Knights can kill if they are given an acceptable excuse. No one will bat an eye, and everyone will forget about it. The stunned girl asked the boy what he meant by this. Could they harm her? He looked calm and added that, to be honest, such a result is possible. But the girl was adamant, just like her mother. She thanked the boy for warning her. However, she was not going to leave the estate and told the boy that it was better to give in to them. The guy was surprised that everyone was the same for her, so he asked her. The girl answered him that for her they are all from the same berry field, that they come whenever they want, and disturb her peace and tranquility. The guy told her that it sounded quite unfortunate, and asked her if she knew who took her to the bedroom when she fell asleep. The girl was not confused, and answered him by asking if he knew who the girl was, who saved the man who had frozen in the rain from death, and asked who it could be. The girl added that because of him, she got soaked to the bone and caught a cold, but she never heard a single word of gratitude from him. He answered her that, however, now she looks quite healthy, but he was not in the mood to argue with her, so he agreed. The girl started tying her hair, and the boy asked where she was going, and added that she could not pack her things and go wherever she wanted in this weather. But the girl answered him that this is her property, and from what kind of miracle she has to run and continued that they are trying to enter her property without her permission. The guy looked at her and did not understand what the girl was going to do, so he asked her. The girl grabbed a shovel and answered him that there was nothing else but to protect herself and her home. The guy came up from behind, half hugging her, and tried to take the shovel from her hands. Leaning down to her ear, he told her that she has absolutely no instinct for self-preservation. The girl was very shocked by such an act of the boy. At that time, Two people who were hanging out on the street went inside the estate and saw this picture. The Imperial Knights said that they had nothing personal, but they were under orders to kill Catherine, and it was obvious that they recognized this guy. The girl did not think that they had already made their way inside. The situation was heating up. She needed to hurry, but she did not have time to blink as the boy rushed towards them. He quickly overcame one of the knights, hitting him in the face. Fragile Katerina watched in amazement. The girl was shocked but the boy continued to beat them. They only had time to shout that they were sorry and begged for forgiveness and mercy. 
The boy told them that they appeared hiding in the bushes like rats, and added that he was surprised at how low the honor and dignity of the imperial knights had fallen. At this time, the knights were already well beaten. He asked what they thought about this account, namely Sir Domian Rodian and Sir Casson Clone, clenching their fists, and the girl thought that he himself appeared like that all the time. The guy continued by saying that even more than that, a woman lives in the estate completely alone, and asked if they were going to make excuses that they didn't know about it. They asked for forgiveness, and apologized for disturbing Miss Katerina. The knight began to say that they were only carrying out the emperor's order, but before he finished, he said that they were scouting the situation while carrying out the order, and added that they did not expect to see him here. They did not expect to see the Archduke Caesar himself here. The boys were really puzzled by the fact that he came to the defense of this girl. Katerina asked him that not only did he look similar to the Archduke, but his name was exactly the same. The guy simply replied that it was a coincidence that he was often told that. One of the knights was braver, and he decided to ask what Mr. Caesar was doing here, and the other was afraid that he would be beaten again and asked him why he asked this. The boy hugged the girl by the shoulder and continued that he really needed an excuse in order to see her beloved. The girl really looked surprised. Unlike the boy, he was too calm. At that moment, everyone in the room was shocked by these words except Caesar, of course, but he added that uninvited guests had appeared and disturbed their fun even late at night. The guy turned to the girl and asked if it was so. In her mind, the girl thought that such a way out of the situation made sense. However, she believes that he has no shame at all. But realizing that the guy is trying to help her, she decided to play along with him. She replied that it was, and that she was very disappointed that their night full of love was ruined. The boys simultaneously began to shout that they were sorry and that they had no excuses, and the couple continued to say that something special was about to happen tonight. Caesar continued that, as he understood, they had nothing to say, and noted that they still seemed to have not come to their senses. I asked them to visit him before they went home. The boy leaned over to the girl and said that he thought he had fully paid his debt to her for saving a man frozen in the rain from death. The girl was not impressed. She knew that there must be a reason why he helped. He couldn't do it just to help. The boy turned to the knights and asked them to leave the house. The boy scolded the girl by asking what she was going to do with this shovel and how much she underestimated what the imperial knights were capable of and ordered her, if she had no more lives to spare, next time not to behave so lightly. The guy noticed that the girl was cold and invited her to sit closer to the fireplace. The girl sincerely thanked him for helping her in this difficult situation. The guy smiled at her and answered that it's all right. Katerina mentioned that she wanted to return the money that he left last time, but the guy refused and said that he does not take back the money that he once gave. The guy leaned over to the girl and said, though, there was silence, and they looked at each other. She did not understand what he wanted to do next. The guy leaned even closer to her. The girl was visibly embarrassed. But the boy simply said that he liked this book and wanted to borrow it for a few days and asked her not to say that it was not possible because he would take it anyway. The surprised girl said that of course she wouldn't mind if he didn't take her. The boy replied that it was good. Then it was time for him to go and close the door behind him. The girl remained sitting on the couch looking into the empty room. He didn't just scare the girl. She blushed and put her hand to her cheek. She tried to come to her senses. The maid turned to her mistress asking if she had heard the news. It seems that Sir Percival will be a thoroughfare in the center of the duchy. Spreading the jam on the bread, the girl asked Percival. You could tell by her voice that she was not happy about this news. The girl answered her that of course she hadn't heard, and Rosa asked not to tell her that she didn't know him because Sir Percival is Lily's paladin. He must return after defeating an extremely strong demon residing in Christopher. While eating her sandwich, the girl mentally cannot believe that he is called Lilia's paladin. Her ears perk up every time she hears him being called. Percival Benedict, being the one in whose veins the blood of the emperor flows, he was considered an outstanding person who could boast not only of a noble origin, but also of talent. People simply called him the hero of the papal curia. That's how he looked in the eyes of people. The girl remembers how the guy turned to her saying that such a nice room is for an ordinary maid. He also suggested something similar in the spirits of the powerful Marquis family. The guy was standing through the window stroking Katerina's cheeks, but he turned to her and asked if it was Anna. The guy continues by saying that maybe the name Anna Orlin, which is suitable only for a provincial simpleton, is also invented. The girl mentions that Percival is not Lilia's paladin, 
He is a real mad dog. Katerina remembers that he was her vent when she existed inconspicuously in Orléans. He was her former lover. At that time, the girl lived like a bird in a cage, and he was a free hawk flying in the sky. She could not resist the temptation to him, but she had no warmth for those memories with him. After all, everything ended on a very bad note. Katerina thought that if she didn't have a single free moment to think about him, then he probably didn't have time for it either. And he probably already forgot about her, so she didn't attach much importance to it. The girl hears how in the yard someone starts shouting that he is wasting his nerves, which he honed for the service of the imperial family, and that it is already too much. The boy sits and angrily tears the grass, and says that he cannot believe that there is not a single gardener in such a large estate. It was Sir Domian, and although you couldn't tell from his appearance, he was very grumpy. Last night he received a punishment in the form of ten days of taking care of the girl's garden. The guy was very upset, and asked when he would finish walking the weeds with his poor hands. Katerina, holding her cat in her arms, thinks that it is good that she does not need to spend money to hire a gardener, but she wondered if the Archduke could use the power of the Imperial Knights in this way. Every time Katerina sees her cat, she feels as if he can grow ten times more, adding that he was so tiny just recently. The girl was filled with pride. The girl remembers that her mother told her something similar. She really wanted to see her. Suddenly, the thought dawned on the girl where she put the portrait of her mother. The girl seemed confused, because she could not lose it. The girl mentions that she put it in a red book, because it attracts attention, adding that it can get lost, so it would be better to hide it between the pages of the book. But the girl remembered that Archduke Caesar took this red book from her. The girl was confused because she carelessly gave it to the boy. The girl burst into tears, screaming that it would be terrible if he accidentally covered the book, because there is the only surviving portrait of her mother. The girl asked very much that nothing should happen to the book. The girl escaped to the basement and went into the room where she saw a magic circle, which once said that the one who takes possession of it will become the ruler of the world. Looking at him, she thought that she did not want to resort to such methods at all, but she had no other way out. The girl took the mop again and started trying to wipe the circle. The girl thought that if the first time she met Caesar was when she was trying to wash away this magical circle, then there was nothing else but to summon him in this way. Trying to wipe the floor, the girl thinks that she should have checked the book before giving it to her. The girl hears a voice that addressed her and said that for some reason he thought it was her. The guy appeared smiling at her and saying that only she is capable of creating such nonsense with a magic circle. The girl folded her hands and began to apologize for calling him so unexpectedly and added that she had a request for him, which the boy asked in surprise. The girl continued that she really needed the book that he recently borrowed, and could he return it just now? The boy replied that it was nonsense and that he could do it. The guy took the girl by the hand and said that in this case they need to get to his house. The girl was surprised. But having just taken the guys by the hand without even considering his proposal, they instantly found themselves in the dark basement of his luxurious estate. Everything happened so quickly that she didn't even have time to blink an eye. The girl thought that his house was quite cozy and comfortable. The girl realized that if she is not mistaken, this place is the residence located in Cristofori. The girl thought that if she asked him again, he would answer again that he was often told that. At this time, the girl's thoughts were interrupted by the boy, who called to her that the girl had turned around. He held a book in his hands and said the title of the book. The girl said that there was such a name and was glad that the book was found quickly. The boy noted that it was the only book with images embedded in the middle of the pages. And he added that it does not seem too reckless for her not to remember the name of the book, which is so important to her. The girl began to babble, saying that he seems to remember. And she wondered if he read it at all. But the portrait of her mother was in place, so the girl could calm down. Katerina decided to ask Caesar if he knew the woman from her portrait. The boy answered her that, unfortunately, he does not remember being familiar with him, and asked who she was. Looking at her mother's portrait, the girl answered that this woman is who she is looking for. The girl began to tell that the portrait was hidden on the shelves in the bedroom where she now lives. She thought that it looks like Caesar doesn't know everything. It is quite possible that the mother stayed in the estate for a short period of time. Sitting at the table, the boy turned and said that Glenn could come into the room. The butler turned to his master and informed him that he needed to tell him something very important. The guy replied that he doesn't need to be ashamed in the presence of the girl, and he can talk. Devoretsky began to tell that it was about the council in honor of the return of the paladins of the papal curia. It was clear that the girl was very surprised. You could see how much the boy was annoyed by this. 
but he said that these fools from the church would not calm down. He thought that someday they would get tired of being so annoying. She remembered how he called her the papal watchdog. She wondered if he really had such a bad relationship with the church. The girl hears the boy say that it is necessary to organize a goat festival. The guy sat and said that you need to let go of the superstition, that if you throw goat shit at a person, they will be blessed and continued, that if you throw shit in their face, they will shut up and go away. The girl added that his jokes are already too much. The boy replied that he was not joking. The girl continued that it was probably time for her to go home because Sir Domian could turn her garden into a wasteland. The guy answered her that he would like to offer her to stay longer, but in truth you can expect anything from him, and continues by saying that although he can be of use, because he belongs to the knights of the order of the emperor, the girl continued by answering that she did not understand in what place it could be useful, while the boy extended his hand to her. He turned to the girl, calling her name and asking her to give him her hand. The girl caught herself thinking that it was strange. It is strange that every time he takes her hand, her heart begins to tremble. The girl thought to herself that he was just showing his kindness, that there was nothing special in this, and noted that just a few days ago she saw his smiling face. But now his facial expression has become shameless. The boy again began to instruct the girl, saying that it would be better for her if she remembered the name of the book that is so important to her, in order not to face such a problem as today. But the girl allowed herself to turn to him, asking how she could call him if she needed him. The guy was very surprised by such frankness of the girl. Katerina thought that she had lost her mind, that she was talking like a girl begging her lover to whom she was indifferent. She could not understand what was wrong with her about the meeting. The guy was surprised that he was the one who could be needed, and asked her the girl in the middle of the night that she would need to inform him about it. The girl added that she can never know what will happen in this estate, added that she cannot erase the magic circle every time Caesar needs her. The boy answered her that she did not have to inform him about such trifles, because he could already know about everything. The guy replied that if she asked so and put something in her hand, it turned out to be a key, he put it in the girl's hand. She was worried because she did not understand how the keys would help. But the boy said that it should use him when he needs it, and that about the method of its use. He asked her to figure it out on her own. The boy told her that he no longer wanted to know for what reason she would need him. The girl at that time asked him to stop making fun of her, but told him not to wait too long. At this time, the maids turned to the girl and said that next time they would prepare herbal tea and madeleines, which the girl liked so much. They asked her to definitely look again, and said goodbye to her. Once at home, the girl thought that since she could not ask him about how to use this key, she first needed to hide it well so as not to lose the key. Rosa burst into the room, and was very glad that her mistress had returned home. Katerina asked the maid what happened. The girl answered her that now was not the time to stand still, because just in front of the estate stood a row of carriages of paladins of the papal curia. The girl was shocked by such news, and remembered that they say that this estate is a nursery of the devil, and that his mistress is a servant of Satan. The girl caught herself thinking that they were pursuing the same goal as the imperial knights who broke into the house. But this time Caesar was not with her, she did not know what to do. But the girl decided that she cannot rely only on Caesar all the time, and that she needs to stand up for herself. However, she could not rule out the possibility that Percival might be outside. Looking at the package, the girl thought that there is nothing wrong with excessive caution. One of the paladins began to shout at Domian that he had no pride left, and he asked the boy if he was not ashamed to be engaged in gardening in such a place, and added that it seemed that the imperial knights finally survived themselves. The gardener asked him why he was shouting like that, because even if he spoke in a whisper, he would still be able to understand, and asked him to lower the volume a little, before his fist knocked out his noble pride. The girl turned to Domian and asked him to stop arguing with them. And approaching her, the boy was surprised by the girl's appearance and asked what it was. But the girl who wore a bag on her head answered that she had a big boil, so she asked not to pay attention to her appearance and said that it would be better to explain to them what is happening here. He replied that Sir Mel had come with the paladins and that they continued to claim that the mistress of the house was a devil's apprentice and they continued to carry all kinds of delusions of this kind. The girl was in no way surprised by this. She knew that, as expected, the only reason for their appearance here was the magic circle in the basement. The officer greeted the girl. He looked very kind. The girl in turn greeted him in return. The officer apologized for this unexpected visit, 
but added that the matter was that the church had given an order to cleanse the evil energy of this area. As soon as the paladins returned from the expedition in which they conquered monsters, they were immediately sent here. The girl replied that this was the matter, and told them not to stand outside the gate. The girl understood that if these paladins had just returned, they were the same ones who should have returned here with Percival. The paladins started yelling for the boy to be more polite with them if they didn't want them to make him regret not letting them inside the estate. The girl was a little uncomfortable because of the mess inside the house, because not even a month had passed since she became its owner. Paladin noticed that he felt a strong, ominous energy nearby, from which his nose itched. Pointing his finger at Katerina's cat, he said that this cat is a devil's puppet. The girl turned to the officer, asking if he brought a charlatan to her house. In turn, Sir Mel turned to Carlos, saying that no matter which way you look, it's just an ordinary cat. He began to shout at everyone present, saying that how dare they doubt Paladin's words. The girl wondered why Merlika suddenly started behaving like that, got angry. Domian said to the boy that he really brought him out of himself. Domian turned to the Paladin, saying that he obviously did not understand the need to know the measure and expressed his indignation, saying that he did not understand how the Paladin could speak so disparagingly of people and animals. When the boy tried to hit him, the paladin answered him that he did not understand what kind of stupid questions these were, because he was entrusted with a sacred mission. Pushing the paladin, everyone present noticed that his wig flew off, and everyone was shocked. He started fighting in tears, saying that it was his wig. Of course, he was very worried that everyone present learned the truth. Everyone present was overcome with laughter. They began to make fun of him that he was bald. Even Katerina's cat started mocking him. He said that you saw how his wig flew off his head. Everyone was amazed that he could talk. Were Sir Carlos's words true? The paladin turned to Katerina, saying that he was right, and added that she might not expect favors, and called her a servant of the devil. Someone broke into this action, saying that it is boring to death. The paladin shifted his gaze, and the boy added that it was not just boredom, but a very depressing picture, and added that he wanted to finally trample all the rudiments of fun into the ground. It was Sir Percival who continued to address Carlos, saying that even if he looks like a dog, is it possible to behave so much like a dog? Katerina caught herself thinking that, as expected, he was part of the punitive expedition. The girl was glad that she decided to put the bag on her head. He said that if he had been in his place, he would have long ago fallen all over the ground from shame, and Carlos replied that he could not believe what Percival was saying. Could he allow the demon that is right under his nose to escape? A crazy smile appeared on Percival's face, and he asked if he dared to contradict him, asked if he really thought that he followed him here as he trusted his stone head. He asked him not to make a mistake, and added that it was all because the morning seemed boring in this peaceful place. He added that it is possible for such a faithful dog like him to do things in a different way, but for him, participation in a punitive expedition is enough to be included in the ranks of the dogs of the Papal Curia, and added that he does not see the point in causing a single unfortunate cat to have a seizure. The girl understood that, as expected, his manners had not changed at all, and were not at all suitable for the profession of a paladin, and his appearance was as Katerina remembered him. Patting the boy on the head, he continued that if he understood everything, they should end this performance, and added that they should return to the hotel, because he was starting to feel hungry. Looking at the boy, Percival added that something still seemed really strange to him. He turned his gaze to the girl and continued that that woman was very similar to one of his acquaintances. He continued by saying that those sparkling eyes, voice, and even body, all this reminded him of that woman. That's why he feels disgusting. He approached the girl and hit the wood with his hand a little higher than Katerina was standing. And he continued that who knows, maybe she is the same woman while the girl was trying to make sure he didn't recognize her. The guy asked what the girl's name was. This was to be expected because he was definitely interested in who was there. The girl only mentally thought about how he would benefit her in general. She did not know how to get out of this situation. Katerina remembered how Caesar was sitting on his sofa and thinking about the fact that a festival should be arranged and that it should be said that if you throw goat shit in the face, you should expect a blessing. The girl replied that her name is Goat Poop. The guy replied that she needed to be more careful and called her a Goat Poop and added that the only thing that makes his friend Carlos human is the presence of blood. Walking away, he added that Carlos is very spiteful and very petty. Waving his hand, he got into his carriage. Finally, it was all over and they went away.
The girl had no doubt that when Percival mentioned that woman, he was definitely talking about her. And earlier, the girl thought that he had already managed to forget about her existence, so she did not expect that everything would be exactly the opposite. The next day, there were many people on the square, and everyone was walking on this warm day. Katerina and Rosa were no exception. Katerina asked the girls, after what happened yesterday, she watched Paladinov all she wanted. Rosa answered that of course they are handsome, so you can forgive them everything, and added that beauty does not carry any sin. Katerina was glad that she did not need much for happiness. She simply said that she would try to get into the first rows. The girl answered her that it was good and wished her to enjoy the parade. She added, telling her to see her at the estate. As for Merlika's cat, whom Sir Carlos called the devil's minion, he, of course, became part of their family. Domian said that he was not at all interested in the demonic nature of the stray cat, and Rosa added that he is very cute. In this world, in order to become a wizard, you need to make a contract with the devil. Christopher's people adore wizards and are friendly to demons. At this time, the paladins began their parade. Everyone was delighted with the pride of the papal curia. Paladin Lilia all tried to attract his attention, and many did not believe that the day had come when they could see him live. At that time, the girl believed that ignorance can sometimes be considered a blessing. Looking at this action, the girl suddenly remembered how Percival proposed to her to run away together and meet tomorrow under this holly tree. Holding the girl's hand, he told her that he would wait for her. Percival had said these words to her in the past. Of course, the girl had no intention of agreeing to this ridiculous proposal of Percival. At that time, when Percival was riding his horse past the girl, he noticed her. The guy was surprised by such a meeting, especially here. The girl was no less surprised that he recognized her and even just noticed her. The boy very quickly stopped his horse and started turning towards the girl. He looked very angry. The girl began to run away and wondered what kind of a joke of fate, how he was able to notice her among all this crowd. The girl thinks that she was too frivolous if she meets him in the city center. Then she will never be able to walk with her head proudly raised. At this time, the girl's hat will fly off her. The girl found a small alley. She could not allow them to meet here. Trying to get to her, the girl seemed to wonder if she managed to break away from him. The girl thought that Percival would not jump after her everywhere in the crowd of onlookers. He is not so sick in the head. While someone from behind grabbed the girl by her shoulder, she was not jokingly scared. But it turned out that she was dragged into the store. She tried to see who it could be. But it turned out to be Domian. She asked him what he was doing here, and he answered that he came to buy weed killer. But the owner said that he needed to see the advice, so he would leave for a while, and left him to look behind the store. The girl understands that this is a flower shop on the square. She thought that she had gone far from the square, but it seems that she made a detour and returned to where she was. The guy asked why this man was chasing her. He asked if he was her hidden lover. The girl answered him that if she had a lover, why would she need to hide him? The boy replied that he had heard that he supposedly had a bride to whom his parents had engaged him, and added that they said she was incredibly beautiful. And Domian said that Percival had a bride. She was a girl who was born weak and had many small ailments. However, the fact of the existence of the bride did not greatly affect the relationship between the girl and the boy. In those days, the personality of Catherine Orléans was quite controversial. Therefore, being at home, she killed her true self in every possible way and behaved very quietly. When she was outside, she could make puns out of her dad's words. A creature in a mask, woven from treachery, therefore, even in a situation where both of them would not have partners for marriage, they would have no future. The girl asked the boy at what moment a man opens his heart to a woman so much that he offers to run away with him. The guy replied that of course this happens when a man is madly in love and asked her why she was asking about this and continued by asking if that paladin chick offered to run away with him. For a moment there was silence in the room. The boy understood that everything was just like that, but the girl did not dare to say it out loud. The guy asked if she refused him. He did not believe that it really happened. The girl answered him that of course not. She gave her consent, and they ran away on the appointed day. And she added that it is not absurd from a rational point of view. The guy noticed that she was a ruthless realist from a young age. The girl answered him that she wanted to end on that note. The girl continued that if he bought everything he needed, it would be good to go to the estate. But at that time, the girl also thought that with the help of the power of love alone, you can overcome any obstacles. But did the boy think the same way? The girl thinks that he was just chasing her because of the memories of that day. After all, they are not close enough to miss each other or regret what happened then.
Finally returning home, Domian looked very happy, which could not be said about Katerina. This whole situation really made her think. Rosa noticed that her mistress was late returning home, and asked what they bought there. The girl answered that Domian asked to buy a weed killer and garden tools. The girl mentally thanked Domian for the fact that he works for free, but his purchases hit her wallet hard. She thinks that now she really needs to start making money. The girl thinks that it would be nice to look at various advertisements in the newspaper and asks Rosa where today's newspaper is. But Caesar was sitting in the room where Catherine entered. He told her that he had taken her to read first and asked if she minded. The girl was surprised by such a sudden appearance of Caesar and asked him for what purpose he decided to visit here. The guy replied that he just came to check if everything was okay with her and invited her to sit down. The girl was surprised by such concern on his part, so she asked if it was hers. The guy asked how her estate was, and he continued by asking if strange things were happening that scared her. The girl answered that she was in perfect order, and her maid Rosa had a hard time getting used to it. The girl continued that Rosa spoke about strange sounds coming from the corridor, and that she had nightmares almost every day, and added that this is why she allocated a room next to hers, and after that all strange things magically stopped. The girl missed that the whole thing is possible in the magic circle located in the basement. They felt that an uninvited guest was approaching the estate. They could not even imagine what was waiting for them. The guy turned to the girl and told her that an extremely tactless guest visited her. What smells as if a sewer pipe has burst, and added that if one of the paladins could pay a visit to her estate, the girl did not know how to answer that. She decided to look out the window to see who passed by. The girl thought that she managed to successfully escape from the meeting place with Percival, but he tracked her down and visited her estate. The girl told Caesar that she needed to be away for a while. The guy asked her if it was normal to go down to him alone. The girl answered him that everything is fine. Even if he hears some noise, he should not go outside under any circumstances. The girl thought that it was unlikely that she would be able to resolve the situation calmly, but today she must deal with Percival once and for all. Having gone outside, the boy turned to the girl, saying that he always wondered why her voice seemed familiar to him. The guy added that he thought that she simply could not be in such a place, so he decided that he had gone out of his mind because he could not forget her. But his omission turned out to be correct. He turned to her, greeting her as Anna, and the girl in turn also greeted him. The girl asked him why he had come here, because it was definitely not to take out his anger on her. The guy started walking towards the girl, saying that he wanted to ask her something that day. He asked why she did not come that day and leaned towards her waiting for an answer. He added that the girl would not misunderstand him. He just wants to satisfy his curiosity and added by asking why she was not under the tree that day. The girl looked very serious and answered him that it was because she did not want to pass. The guy looked confused. He wanted to deny her something, but he clearly did not succeed. Because the girl interrupted him and added that he also did not come to this place on the same day. Not only Katerina did not come to the agreed place on an unspecified day, the boy was not there either, but she decided not to ask him what the reason was. And she added that, unlike him, she has no tendency to dwell on the past. From the very beginning, the girl was not going to participate in Percival's ridiculous plan, but she was wondering if Percival would really come to that tree. So as she drove by in the carriage, she asked the carriage to stop for a second. The maid asked her if she had lost anything in this place, while Katerina carefully watched the tree. The girl, without supporting her chin with her hand, answered her that not only were the azaleas so beautiful, but Percival did not come, and strangely enough, she felt relief as if a stone had fallen from her soul. She said that she had enough flowers. Now they can return to the estate. Percival was not a special person for her. Fixing his hair, the boy laughed and said to her that she had changed a lot, although it was not surprising that so much time had passed for the second one and there was no need to wait. The guy added that apparently he lost his mind when he went after the girl. He put the hat on the girl's head while she was confused by such a gesture. The girl looked at him in surprise, and he added that on the way to her, he thought about something and came to the conclusion that it would be better for her to change her place of residence. And he added that how can he once again come for her soul? He left, and the girl looked confusedly at the hat he put on her head. The girl hears how the guy turned to her, asking how she is looking at returning home. The girl turned to the guy's voice. Caesar added that if, of course, she is not burning with the desire to meet his eyes when he suddenly decides to turn around. The girl asked him if he really thought that Percival would do that. The boy, taking the girl by the hand, added that although he accidentally overheard their conversation, 
it was difficult for him to imagine that it would be otherwise. The girl thought that she probably should have chased him away or moved the conversation to another place, but was she once the one who cared about the opinions of others? Suddenly, in the girl's house, there was a hum again. Something shook the house. The girl woke up frightened and did not understand what was happening around her. Crouching down, she began to look in the direction of her door, wondering what kind of frightening shocks it was. It was another monster. He looked like a horse with very long claws. He was very happy that he finally got to Eden. He also succeeded in the long-awaited challenge. The girl was shocked that her house was destroyed again. She wondered why these monsters always appear and destroy other people's property. And he also likes to laugh like a horse. But the girl instantly caught herself thinking that now it is much more important where Rosa and Domian are. The girl clearly knew that it was necessary to deal with this situation before one of them got hurt. The girl knew that if she went into battle with her bare hands, she would not get out alive. Winding the rope on her shiza, the girl remembered that she had a key with which she could call Caesar. The girl remembers how the boy told her that he would help her if she needed him, but she did not know how to use him. The girl finally understood the meaning of his words, because every time Caesar came to her estate, he left him through the door. The girl realized that if she uses this key and the door, she will be able to meet with Caesar. The girl inserted this magic key into the lock of her door. The girl was very happy that the door opened. She had hoped for the best. Opening the door, the girl entered there and did not immediately understand where she was. But Caesar was sitting in front of her, writing something in his papers. He calmly turned his gaze to the girl and asked why she decided to visit him at such an early hour. The girl was not immediately able to answer him what the matter was, but mentally pushed herself away, but understood that she was unable to take her eyes off him. The girl approached him and asked for forgiveness for such an unexpected visit, but added that she urgently needed his help. The girl began to tell that this time a strange monster appeared in the estate, which looked like a horse, and that it breaks everything in its path. And she added that she did not know where Rosa and Domian had gone. He answered her that first she needed to calm down and catch her breath. The guy added that he left something useful for her for such cases, so she doesn't have to look for it every time. The girl replied that it was so, that he gave her a key with which she could come to him, and she continued that even if she got the key, he is not obliged to always fulfill her request and apologized. In her mind, the girl admitted that Caesar was absolutely right. He should not solve her personal problems. The girl was already very upset because he had seen their conversation with Percival recently, and now she appeared before him again in an inappropriate form. The guy denied the girl saying that he didn't mean it at all and that the girl misunderstood him. He added that he did not explain everything to her properly and apologized, admitting that it was his fault. The guy said that he is not such a kind person to convey to everyone the meaning of the words spoken to him, but in the current situation, he has nothing else left. Caesar asked Katerina if he could look at the key. The girl, of course, answered that he could and handed the key to him. He carefully looked at the key and asked the girl if she always wore it around her neck. The girl was surprised that he made such conclusions after only looking at the key and answered that everything is exactly like that. The girl was indignant that the boy was making fun of her again and was trying to speed the boy up, because if they were delayed, not a stone would be left from the estate. But the boy answered her that later he would replace the broken thread. Once at Katerina's house, the boy told her that, as he had said earlier, she did not need to visit him. The girl looked shocked at the monster's head lying on the floor. The girl did not know how this could happen, because it was the big monster that was destroying the estate, and she was interested in who could defeat it. The boy came out of the darkness and turned to his mistress. It was Domian. He asked if everything was okay with Katerina, and added by asking if she knew how he was scared that the monster could eat her. This is exactly what the girl was going to ask him, but she asked where Rosa was. The guy replied that Rosa went to the city early in the morning to buy some food, so she is completely safe. The guy was upset because the destruction from the estate polluted the garden, which he had recently tidied up. Finally, the girl understood that when Caesar said useful, he meant Domian himself. Although Domian looked like a simple boy, in fact he was an imperial knight, which meant that he was skilled with a sword, and the girl decided that while he lived in her estate, she had the right to use his services as a bodyguard. This meant that Caesar cares about her safety. She did not know how to describe the feelings that took over her. The girl thanked Caesar for taking care of her. Caesar did not answer, but looked at the girl with such warmth. He added that if Domian only takes care of the garden when there is a monster in the estate, then he has not yet come to his senses, and his punishment is extended for another three months. 
Caesar paid him a salary. Thus, peace and tranquility returned to the estate. While reading a newspaper on the street, the girl saw that the boy was again sitting and doing nothing. Of course, the girl appreciates Caesar's care, but she thinks that in the future she needs to learn to deal with problems herself. The girl did not know when the one who knew anything about her mother would appear, and in general, the girl wanted to stay as long as possible. Reading the newspaper, the girl was surprised that such a serious incident took place, and there is not a single word about it in the newspaper. But if you think about it, everything was exactly the same in the case of the goat's face. Although the destruction of the estate did not make much noise, everyone behaved as if they did not notice what had happened. The girl was interrupted by Rosa calling her. The girl was surprised. She turned to the landlady, saying that she had a guest, and asked if she was taking her to the guest room. Katerina was surprised, because she was not expecting guests. What shocked Katerina even more was that the girl added that the guest said that she was Katerina's younger sister. Anna was standing in front of the house and said that although the facade was a bit shabby, the estate looked quite good and added that it looked like Katerina. Everything turned out well. Anna was surprised by such achievements of her sister in such a short period of time. 